Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're going to do a bit of exploring for once. We're going to travel further afield than the little base area here and I want to track down the last three villages that we haven't yet visited since the 1.14 update. We've seen a lot of plains villages, thanks to the fact that I have a lot of them around here in my villager breeder and my trading hall. In fact, the villagers who are resident in my farmhouse are also plains villages. And of course, we've spent some time among the desert villages where we did our first disastrous raid and the jungle and swamp villages in that village we set up a little while ago. But I want to travel to three other villages today to kind of complete the full set, as it were, of all of the villages that are now present in the game. We can see their different outfits, we can take a look at how their houses are designed, and that kind of thing. But before we do that, you might notice something that's a little bit different on the horizon over here at the farmhouse, and I want to take you through some of the changes that I've been making to the kelp farm boat, because as you can see, it is now looking a little bit more ship shape. It's actually looking a bit more like the boat I wanted to design around it. This is going to be a kind of Chinese junk boat, and it's got these fantastic diagonal sails that kind of fan out from a point over here. And it's looking pretty great so far. I still need to do a lot of work on this because, of course, there should be sails on the fore and aft masts as well. And I think this one could potentially use one more sail here. I'm not certain. Plus, there's a bunch of other stuff to do around the outside here as well for kind of supporting structures and stuff for the rest of it. But I'm pretty happy with this so far. I think this is coming together pretty well. And I would show you it when it's done, but I'm going to have to do a bunch more work on it. And I wanted to get this episode out to you guys. So yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to seeing this completed. I know I am. I'm kind of working on it here and there. But I think today we're going to go a little further afield and we're going to try and find a tiger village, a savannah village and an ice plains village. Now the first two I actually know where they are already, but I have not found an ice plains village because in Java edition at least they didn't generate until 1.14. So we'll need to find some new chunks, some places that I haven't been before or places that I deleted when I trimmed the world of the redundant chunks that we didn't need and it's going to be interesting trying to find one because I might also scout that out as a location for a future build. But in the meantime, I think I know where a tiger village can be found. In fact, if I fly over past Brimstone Castle and out into the tiger on this side, we'll probably find that there is one not too far away. And here it is. I scouted this one out a little while ago. This is actually relatively close to my farmhouse area. And look at these guys. It's so interesting seeing the different outfits they all have. This, of course, is an unemployed guy. He doesn't have any of the overlays any of the trappings of a village profession and it looks like there aren't many of them that will in fact is that our first nitwit of the update i have not seen a nitwit before but of course he's got the the green coat that denotes that he is a nitwit that's and it's kind of raggedy at the back too that's kind of awesome because yeah over at the jungle and swamp village we never really found any nitwits we didn't breed any as a result of you know setting up that village so that they could breed easily and I was a little bit concerned that nitwits had just kind of vanished in a way. Like, I knew they were still supposed to be in the game, but I thought maybe there was a bug preventing them from generating. Maybe it's the case that you don't get them as much when you're breeding villagers. Who can say? But anyway, it looks like this village is alive and well, although very few of them seem to have professions. So let's take a quick look around this tiger village. I think... If anything, this one most closely resembles how Plains Villages used to look. They've all got fairly low roofs. The houses are made out of cobblestone. They have a little bit of moss in the cobblestone as well, which is kind of cool. Oh, and some of these have sweet berries in the chests, which might be a pretty good alternative if you can't find them out there in the wild, if you want to start yourself a sweet berry farm. This, <laughs> this house has like a weird porch kind of situation and there's just nothing in there which is a little bit odd we've got a crafting table and a bed in here but no workstation so of course villagers aren't going to gravitate to that here we go that's the stuff we've got a weapon smith here with his grindstone and i like this little outdoor kind of lean to design that they've got for the the weapon smith's grindstone nice open area for him to work he doesn't need the intensity of a blacksmith's forge with a bunch of lava and stuff in it but he's at least got his grindstone to work on likewise we've got a farmer over here and i think i saw another farmer over there in the distance actually buy some berry bushes so that's pretty cool these guys are trading carrots 
and beats. But of course we don't get any kind of big discount from these guys because village reputation doesn't spread like globally. It's a very local thing and the villagers over at our jungle swamp village haven't been able to gossip with the villagers over here to say, hey, this guy's on the level. So I kind of wonder if it would be possible to get some kind of like gossip spread from one village to another. Say if you cure a zombie villager elsewhere in the world, but then through moving them through minecarts in the nether or something like that, you could bring one of those villagers to a different village like this and basically you know, encourage them to gossip with these villagers, spread the word that I'm a nice guy who cures zombie villagers, and potentially get me discounts elsewhere in the world. That might be something to try in future. I'm not interested in doing that today, but it might be an interesting experiment in case we want to, say, move one of those villagers over to my trading hall and get me discounts on all of the stuff that I already trade. Or move them over to the farmhouse where Mendelssohn can decide that I'm a nice guy and I deserve those mending books for a little bit less. This guy appears to be kind of walking in a trough <laughs> right now. I'm not entirely sure what this is for. It seems to be just this like blank area of, of spruce logs or spruce planks and, and trap doors. But it looks like the kind of thing that you might fill up with if you could waterlog one of these trap doors or actually it's, it's completely surrounding that there. Yeah, I guess you could probably fill this up with water if you wanted to. I think this guy is probably not going to have an easy time getting out of that though. So we got some pumpkins and stuff around here. These appear to have been generated with the village rather than being a naturally spawned patch of pumpkins because they're around each of these farmhouses or these farming areas over here. So that's pretty cool. Is there anything else to spot in this tiger village or is that it? It does seem to extend down here a little bit, but I'm not seeing many other village professions. We have an iron golem who is stuck in a tree being useful as always. And let's see if we've got anything else in here. Oh, we got ferns in here. Interesting. A few spruce logs as well. Some more sweet berries and pumpkin seeds. So yeah, it does seem that pumpkins are very definitely a feature of these tiger villages. Well, at least we know where these guys are now so that potentially we can come back here if we want some tiger village. Oh, we've got a pumpkin pie in there as well. Very nice. I might actually take the ferns, weirdly, because I haven't done much farming of ferns, but I quite like building with them. They're a nice... Uh, tall plant that you can, if you bone meal them, you can get a nice two block tall fern that look like this and they're really great for decorating areas. So I might get myself some of those, but that's a, that's a tiger village, a little bit of an anticlimax, not a huge amount going on here in terms of village professions and industry, but maybe another task for the future. Maybe we can transform this into something like a more bustling hive of industry. We will see. But for now, I'm going to leave these guys behind. Thank you so much for uh, <laughs> yeah, showing me around, I guess. I'll see you guys later. It's interesting, actually. The path seems to wind out in different directions from this village, and there are what look like milestones or something on the path. Just these occasional little boulders here and there on the outskirts of the village. And they don't seem to be part of a structure that hasn't fully generated. I genuinely think these are meant to just be markers to indicate like this way to the village. They're almost like arrows pointing towards the path. And here and there, you'll also find jack-o'-lanterns generating by the sides of the roads that are clearly not just carved pumpkins, they're actually giving off some light. But if I follow the road to its end over here, which is actually pretty far away from the area where village houses have generated, we got nothing. Nothing else generated as part of this village. So we've got a nice big area if we wanted to expand it. We could even expand it along the roads that already exist here, but that's really all we're going to see in this tiger village. To scope out the savannah village, I have taken the portal to my desert temple out here and I'm going to fly over in this direction because there is a pretty large expanse of savannah out here which I believe had some villagers in it before we reset it for the update. So if not in this savannah here, there's a desert village over there on that corner. I'm expecting us to find a couple of savannah villages somewhere in this region. Savannas and deserts usually generate pretty close together, so where you find one, you will probably find the other, with a pretty equal chance for villages in both. And here we are, tucked away in this nice little savannah valley, and right on the border of a dark oak forest, we have our first savannah village. And I already like the costumes that the savannah villagers have, the outfits they've got here, just because of how nice that red coat is. That's so cool looking. And it seems like the unemployed villagers even have this kind of headgear already. They have this kind of like savannah leaf 
headband that they've got going on, but these are pretty definitely the unemployed guys. That's not like any other overlay that you see in the other villagers when they adopt a profession. So as with all other professions, oh, we've got a couple of water sources that haven't updated here. You'll find the farmers wearing their straw hats and with their usual kind of belts. And it looks like we have a couple of farmers here thanks to the amount of farmland and composters and stuff that are around here. The iron golem is already here, very good. But once again, we have very few village professions already present here. We've just got a couple of the standard guys. We've got a butcher here with his white apron and a couple of unemployed folks. Let's see what the houses look like. Really interesting to see stained clay or terracotta, I guess, being used in the design of some of these village houses, considering that so long they were just wood and cobblestone. It's kind of nice to see some variety, some variety of the colors of beds as well. And instead of pumpkins, these folks seem to have hay bales, which could actually be a really good resource for a player starting out because hay bales can be transformed back into wheat and you get a lot of wheat per hay bale. It's nine wheat per hay bale, which means you can convert one of these into three loaves of bread if you're feeling hungry. Not to mention the fact that they've clearly got several farms around the place where you could farm the wheat yourself. And it seems like they are even growing melons. And melons were always quite difficult to find if you didn't find an abandoned mine shaft for the seeds or a jungle. So claiming the occasional melon for a village, you know, be kind to them and replant it. But it's nice to have that accessible to you this early. I like the fact that some of these houses are built on stilts too. Oh, we got a cartography table in here and a compass as well. So the loot in some of these chests might actually be relevant to the trade of whichever villager happens to live there at the time. And in here we have a blast furnace with a glazed terracotta over the top of it. That's actually quite clever, as though the blast furnace has heated that and has glazed the terracotta above it. Although it's still kind of disappointing that glazed terracotta works so well in a 2x2 pattern, but just looks incomplete without it. Like, you don't really have like a 1x1 pattern, a single block pattern of, of glazed terracotta. Let's see if I can find a bed for the night while I'm out here, because I could definitely use sleeping right now. <laughs> it's weird. It seems like while most of these houses do have professional workstations in, for example, this one here has a brewing stand. That one up there has a grindstone. A lot of the villagers don't seem to have immediately adopted those professions, and most of the houses don't seem to have beds. So I wonder maybe we just turned up here during a point of the day where the game wouldn't automatically assign professions to those villagers because of, you know, it not being the work day or something like that. But I'm, I'm a little bit worried that they're not actually accepting the professions for whatever reason. And it looks like this one here has a few cows going on. We've got a smoker here, so this must be the butcher's house. And I imagine these cows have generated as part of the, part of the landscape here, part of the village itself in the same way that the shepherd's house at the desert village I tried to defend from the raid also had a couple of sheep. No, it seems like pretty much all of the villagers are safely asleep in their beds for now, though. I'm going to quickly hop up here and take a look at this lean-to up here on the hill, which might be difficult for them to get to, but no, it looks like there are shepherds here as well, or at least there is a little pen for two sheep and a kind of nice little feeding trough, <laughs> which is which is pretty cool. I'm going to do my, my, my part to light this place up. A little bit, make sure stuff doesn't spawn up here. Not that the sheep are going to be in any great danger, but always nice to have a little bit of extra lighting around here. And before the zombies invade the village and it gets even worse, I think I might retire to my base and uh, come back when I'm ready to go and explore for a snow village. Because, yeah, I don't really want to cause chaos out here if I don't need to. And from what I can tell, this seems to be one of the only places in the surrounding savannah after flying around for a little bit, where there is a savannah village. So uh, I'd better get going. <laughs> now to find our final village, I've gone and repaired my elytra and grabbed a bunch more fireworks because this could potentially be a long trip. The mine atlas tool that I use for mapping when I'm looking for places elsewhere in my world does not include these types of villages yet. And there are other programs out there that might be able to help you find them, such as Amidst, which I'm pretty sure has updated to Minecraft 1.14's world generation now. So you should be able to find villages that way. However, some folks in the comment section on my video about how to find villages were a little bit disappointed that I used a mapping tool to find them in the first place. So I thought I would give you a taste of what it's like looking for a village when you don't know where one is. And it really helps 
in the first instance if you have elytra because that's going to allow you to fly around look from villages from high up and actually spot villages from a distance which it's much more difficult to do if you're running around on foot because as you might imagine looking for a village when you're walking through a forest and all you can see is trees is actually kind of difficult. You have to spot the telltale signs of a glow in the distance where there are light sources, blocks that might seem out of place in that biome, or you know, a glimpse of a generated structure here and there. But if you have a Lytra, it's much easier to take to the skies and fly off in search of a village where you can look at things from more of a top-down perspective. So I'm gonna fly out about 4,000 blocks to the northwest, 4,000 blocks on both axes, because there is a massive snow plains area up there, which includes a couple of really nice ice plain spikes biomes. It's further out than I've ever flown in this direction, and I was kind of saving it until snow villages became a thing in this version of Minecraft, and we're going to go out there and see if we can find ourselves a snow plains village. Now, I have no guarantees that this is going to be out there, so we just got to cross our fingers and hope for the best. There are a couple of snowier biomes on the way that might even have generated a village since the update. But for now, we're going to be kind of flying by the seat of our pants and seeing what we can find. So, wish me luck, and I'll see you when we're over there. There you go. At long last, we have found it. And I have started to wait for the sun to come up because I don't want to spawn a bunch of strays and other nasty mobs in this area. But here we are in the land of ice and snow. And yep, there's some skeletons spawning over there already. This ice plains biome actually stretches a really long distance north. There's about 5,000 blocks long in some areas, and while it's not as wide as that, it's going to be the perfect location for a future base that I have planned. I want to build a ski resort at some, at some point in the future. I don't think it's going to be for a little while, because of course we're still working on other projects around Founders Forge, but I like the idea of building a ski town somewhere. It's actually something I did Back in my original Minecraft single player series, I started to build an area with a little ski lodge and a plaza and everything, and then stuff just got away from me, I was too busy with other things. And I would love to come back to a project like that a few years on and with my building skills much improved. I think we could do it justice, I think it'd be a fun project for the future. Unfortunately, not going to work on that right away, so sorry to tease that project and then rip it away from you, but uh, yeah, sometimes... It just doesn't feel like the right time, the right place to do a bunch of building, considering this is a tutorial series and all that. But the big bonus of this area being so large is that I'm pretty much guaranteed to spot something as we are running around. And in fact, I've already spotted a campfire curling smoke upwards from this village over here. Of course, the snow plains will be dotted with other cold biomes, including tigers. And that's where we find another spruce village, which actually has a campfire burning outside. It's pretty cool. It's on top of a hay bale as well, so you can see the campfire smoke stretch up into the sky. Hay bales will actually provide a much taller plume of smoke for campfires if campfires are placed on top of them, so it's natural that you might see this actually, uh, you know, visible from a distance instead of the puffs of smoke from these small log lodges where the, uh, the campfire is just embedded in there and the plume isn't going to reach quite as high. Pretty cool though, that we were able to spot that from a distance and it alerted us to the presence of a village. This village even has an igloo as part of the structure, but it does look like it's one of the naturally generated igloos, and it has a trap door. Oh, interesting. So this one does actually have one of the Arctic research stations below it. And you know what, while I'm here, I might actually break that bed and take it with me because that has been a problem over the last little while. But here you go, we have a regular, actually an unemployed villager, which is kind of funny because this is supposed to demonstrate that there is a cleric villager here and that you can convert him into a zombie cleric and back again. But this zombie cleric, of course, has kept his profession. If we cured him, though, with the golden apple that's in here and one of the splash potions of weakness, we would probably just find ourselves with a regular unemployed villager again, because that's not how, not how zombie villagers work now. So pretty funny. I'll take the cactus as well, because why not? But I'm not really interested in curing this zombie villager while I'm here, just kind of interested in the fact that this is here in the first place. And like I said, we can claim the bed 
that's at the top here, take it with us and hopefully we won't have to worry too much about skipping the night after that. It is quite clear from looking around this village though how different some of the village construction can be. This weaponsmith's house, we can tell it's a weaponsmith house because there are two grindstones out the front of it, actually has some diamonds in the chest and some loot that would be worthwhile to take with you, a little bit of gold ingots, fair enough. There doesn't seem to be anything up here like the, this feels like it should be a top floor with the windows up there, but it's just a, a nice tall house, which is good because from my experiments in the jungle village, I found that villagers really don't like multi-story houses. What is it with farmers and standing in these things? They just seem to like standing in these, you know, outside troughs, but they, they're having difficulty pathfinding over the trap doors, I think. Got another blacksmith's lean-to over there as well. Very cool. Probably another farm out here. There's a guy, another guy standing up here. Oh, and I thought I saw a glimpse of a fox over here in the rest of the tiger. We're certainly hearing cats here and there as well. I kind of wish I'd brought some raw fish with me so that I could claim a couple of these cats for the advancement, but I think we're going to be doing that later this week, taking care of some of the advancements and making sure that we can tick some of those off the list. This feels like it's going to be kind of completion week, I guess, because there are a bunch of objectives I want to complete. Finding each of the villages was one of those, and then, of course, completing some of the advancements is probably going to be another one. Watch out for the wolves, youngsters. <laughs> These wolves seem like they're walking towards the baby villagers with some kind of intent, but maybe they're just on the lookout for sheep. Anyway, I need to be on the lookout for a different type of village because we've seen one of these already in this episode. I can't let myself get too distracted by that. We need to fly even further north to see if the ice plains continue. And from what I have seen on the map, there are several of these ice spikes biomes around and I would absolutely love it if there was a village just nestled into one of these somewhere. I don't know how likely that's going to be. I don't think they tend to generate up close to these types of biomes, but you never know. And a village hidden amongst the spikes of ice would be really, really cool. I wonder if we can get a good fly over and check downwards to see if there is anything. Nope, looks like we're not seeing a village inside the biome itself, but some really tall ice spires. Those are majestic looking. Let's see if we can find a village nearby. And as luck would have it, there was one on the other side. So I spotted this while I was flying around with Elytra and could not help but come over and take a look. And these villages are quite unique in terms of the way they generate. They don't really look like any other village and there are really some unique characteristics to this one now. Not the least of which is that there are lanterns everywhere, and I'm pretty sure this is the only village type that uses lanterns as part of its automatic generation. There are snowballs and ice here in the chest. That's even some blue ice, which I might take with me because blue ice is relatively rare to come across and you don't want to mine it all out of the ice spikes biomes or the, uh, the iceberg biomes. In fact, I think all of this is actually... Oh no, that's packed ice rather than blue ice. They're not too different <laughs> it turns out but no there's there's definitely some blue ice around here there's some blue ice formed as part of these igloo style houses as well and i love the outfits that these guys have they've got these little kind of <laughs> that, that guy's a cartographer with his hat they've got these fantastic hats these little kind of earmuffs and some very woolen looking clothes as well so that's very very cool Good to see that the snow village here actually has some residents as well. Looks like they should have a farmer over here. And maybe this is the farmhouse. Oh no, this is the cartographer's house. And as we can see before, we had some paper and a compass in there as well. Let's take another quick look around. Looks like we've got a farmer over there. Fantastic. There may even be a butcher's house here, which is why we've got a pig. And it looked like there was a chopping block inside with the smooth stone uh, block there. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, okay. A little bit of regular food for uh, a standard villager around here. And each of these houses from the top looks like mounds of snow, but they are actually individual igloo-style dwellings where these two seem to be getting a nap already. So seems like it's probably a good idea if I do the same as well. Good morning, Snow Village! And everyone's coming out for the morning meeting. Looks like the farmer here is living in this house. So let's see what we've got in there. Just a, a, a fairly simple rustic dwelling with a bed. I guess he does all of his business outside. I like this. This is a fun feature. You've got these frozen fountains near the center of the village instead of having a well, which is what all of the other villages used to generate with. I'm not quite sure about the placement of these blocks on the corners, though. <laughs> there seems to be one that's just like... Oh, right, they're, they're six-sided wood blocks, of course. So they're, they, they don't quite look right. It's a little strange, but they're right next to the bell here as well, so the villagers are going to come and meet around these 
in the afternoon. And we got some little guys as well, some little baby villagers. Very cool. Got a furnace in there with nothing in it, of course. And can see some cats spawning around the outskirts of the village too. Let's see what we've got in here. Smoker, yes, this is definitely a butcher's place. They seem quite keen on uh, on pigs out here in the, the ice plains as well. It's cool that each of the environments has its own animals of choice. Like the uh, the desert village had some sheep in there in the shepherd's house. The butcher in the uh, savannah biome had some cows. The butcher here has some pigs. So you kind of got the uh, the different, you know, delicacies of the different area, I suppose you could say. That's kind of fun. Got another big house up here on the hill. Let's see what this is. Kind of like a ski lodge type of thing, I imagine. We've got a cartographer and a librarian meeting up here too. This looks like, yeah, standard cartographer's house once again it's nice that they f they form this kind of pattern though and it's it's neat to see that there are such a variety of houses now if you went to two separate villages of this type you would probably see some completely different styles of houses so it's neat that there are so many different varieties of them now let's light this place up a little bit to make sure that zombies don't end up spawning in this cave and coming out to scare the villagers during the day. This village even goes all the way out the back here to this house, and it seems like that's probably going to be the outer limit of it, but we've got pathway blocks going all the way up here to the door of this house, where we've got an emerald in the chest, which I will take. I'll leave the potatoes, because we don't really need those right now. But everywhere, they have these lantern lamps, and those are really, really nice. If you wanted a quick supply of lanterns, and you didn't want to... Um, you know, you didn't want to waste some iron on them if iron is precious to you. Then you could always try and find one of these villages, take all of the lanterns, maybe replace them with light sources of your own, like torches or something like that. And you could probably get a fair amount of lanterns from this place. But it gives the whole village a nice cozy atmosphere, which I'm a really big fan of. But having seen each of the villages that we wanted to check out today, I think that's probably where we're going to wrap up this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Which village is your favourite out of all of them? Let me know in the comments. That'd be fantastic to hear from some of you guys. But until then, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the episode. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.